In this video, we explain the concepts alternative stable states, tipping points, resilience, and hysteresis in natural systems, using the classic example of shallow lakes. We illustrate the main concept of alternative stable states with an abstract two-dimensional stability landscape. If we drop a ball somewhere on this landscape, it can roll either to valley A or to valley B, depending on its initial position on the landscape. Here, the horizontal position of the ball represents the state of the system. For instance, water clarity of a pond or a shallow lake. In a shallow lake, state A may represent a state with clear water and submerged vegetation. And state B may represent a murky water state dominated by phytoplankton. These two alternative stable states are represented by valleys because they are internally stabilized by negative feedback mechanisms. Submerged water plants, for instance, reduce sediment resuspension and provide a refuge for algae-eating zooplankton. On the other hand, once the system is in the murky state, algal blooms promote shady conditions and the lack of rooting plants promotes sediment resuspension. The hill represents an unstable state that separates the two basins of attraction. It is important to note that a situation with intermediate water clarity is not stable. Now imagine that external pressure on the system increases. By doing this, the basin of attraction of state A is becoming smaller. And with that, the ecological resilience of state A decreases. Ecological resilience is the size of the perturbation needed to push the system out of its current state. Think, for instance, of increasing nutrient input due to increasing agricultural activity nearby. These changes won't be directly visible in the state of the system. The ball remains nearly in the same position, and the state of the lake seems to remain clear with submerged water plants and fish. The loss of resilience may therefore go completely unnoticed. However, note that it will be easier to push the system over a threshold now, if resilience decreases even more, the stable state disappears and the system will suddenly flip into a new state. This is called a critical transition or tipping point. This tipping of the system is due to internal reinforcing mechanisms of the system. In shallow lakes, for instance, once water clarity starts to decrease, the lack of light will hamper growth of water plants. Fewer plants will trigger a further decrease in water clarity due to an increase in sediment resuspension and algae growth, leading to even more shading. It is important to note that lowering the pressure on a system does not imply that the system will also flip back. So despite being under the same exact conditions the system was previously in while in state A, it is now trapped in state B. Once a system is in a particular state, it has the tendency to remain there because of internal stabilizing mechanisms. Therefore, the state of the system at a particular moment in time depends on the state in which it has been before. This current state's dependence on its history is called hysteresis. Various ecosystems are suggested to have alternative stable states and tipping points. Examples include coral reefs, seagrass beds, forests, and mussel beds. This way of thinking about stability of systems has also inspired other scientific disciplines, such as psychology, medicine, and finance, to investigate the concepts of alternative stable states and resilience. Obviously, the representations of alternative stable states presented here are simplified versions of reality. However, as a metaphor, they can help us understand why some systems suddenly flip to another state. The underlying mathematical theory also provides us with tools to understand the role of feedbacks and to develop indicators of resilience in real life systems. Now, you've learned about alternative stable states, tipping points, resilience, and hysteresis.